Pikes Peak 2023. We actually, we had scheduled to run this last year. Uh, factory deal with Mazda Japan. When we pitched to run an either unlimited or exhibition um, and yeah, do what we do and put the rotary engine, do a conversion. You know, we felt like we could build a really sick car that um, people will talk about. It'll be a good challenge for us. Yeah, be able to tackle the, the hill out here in Colorado. Awesome. So we chassis wise feels freaking incredible. Car's got a lot of grip, yeah, lots of traction. First time testing the new compound on the Toyo. This surface of the track I'd say is probably similar, it's a very similar rock to what the surface is going up pikes. Um, the track is was quite rough, so it's quite good to get that kind of feel um, with the suspension. Only issue we really had was cooling. Um, yeah, things getting freaking hot within like two or three minutes which is not ideal because a fast run up the hill was about 10 minutes so um, yeah other than that we're good to go. The car while it's been based here has been at Terminal Racing back in Long Beach, um, came into the country uh, on a ship um, and then Johnny's been helping out with the um, transportation and everything in the car to get it around the states. Um, Tony, far out the amount of work that she's done back in New Zealand trying to work with you know Japan time on parts and organizing stuff from USA and UK and you know to build the car has been a massive process This whole project is, man, it's really scary because I'm not just trying to learn the car, I'm trying to learn the mountain. And this mountain, there's 150 corners to try and remember. There's so much elevation, so many of the corners look exact same, but then just around the corner, some of, you know, flat six gear, 140 mile an hour, and some are a full hairpin where you back the first gear. But then also for myself, man, I'm, like lacking of oxygen, it's like such hard work mentally, like obviously the fear and the nerves are like through the roof, you, you know, and we're up at two o'clock in the morning, the entire team, you gotta be at the gate at three o'clock in the morning. At 5 a.m. is driver's briefing, 5.15 you're on track, and so you're lining up at 5.15, it's foggy, it's cold, you're surrounded by snow, and you're doing 140 mile an hour runs with cliffs, banks like no room for error and it it's it's scary The nerves, mate. I've never had nerves like that for a long time. Shit. But yeah, as soon as, as soon as you get the green flag, the nerves just disappear, and it's all on. But I run this like so many times on the simulator, trying to memorize all the corners. I got about three corners in, and I was just blank. They all look so the same, and because you're going so fast, I just lost my bearings where I was at. It wasn't until I got about I don't know a minute into it into the switchback sections and then I could really discover like find out where I was and then know that which corners have like the double apex which ones you could commit I mean it was only my first run but car went good temperatures still again is hot we have got some water squirters that we're going to put into this thing this afternoon uh, suspension feels really good down here like 
Ideally I'd probably stiffen the suspension up a little bit but at the top we do have a lot of big bumps. So this morning we're meant to be te testing on the top section but it's covered with snow so we're testing bottom section today. Uh, but yeah, good to blow the cobwebs out, get the nerves away and yeah now ready to freaking send it. Those few runs that we've had for, for the practice, I'd actually been running the wet just because I felt more comfortable. The car was a little bit off edge, but that's kind of my happy place. When the car's already, like, I'm not talking about drifting up the hill, but it's kind of like already broken off its edge of its tire, so it's already leaning. It's a little bit of wheel spin, but it felt a lot, I felt a lot more confident in the, on the wet. And then when we got to the top section, Reese Millen came over and he just gave me some, yeah, some really good words of advice, and that was that we needed to run on the slick because the wet tire will not survive from the bottom to the top. Remember, we're only doing these short runs. It was broken into thirds. The weather was cold. There's different sections, but yeah, we were kind of changing tires for each run. And he said, "There's no way that that wet weather tire was going to make it all the way to the top on race day." and that would frustrate me more because then I'll be just trying to hang onto the car with no grip on the fastest section right up the top. third run was the fastest we freaking punched out a really good time we were third behind Tanner and Reese um, and yeah would put us in a really good spot super a lot of confidence heading into the next day which was qualifying on the lower section Reese tells me I need to get in the 20s he's like man you need to be in the 420s I'm sitting at 449 so I'm so far off and that I felt like I was on the edge jumped in the car and yeah just sent it 100 and felt so good, crossed the line. Um, I had lost the the um, connection for the live stream, so I'm like trying to check, trying to check, and then it comes up 4:23, and I was just like, "Fuck yes!" Like, could not believe that I'd axe that much. We're gonna run it tomorrow with all the safeties off. We'll probably just have an oil pressure one on there because I don't want to. If we lose oil pressure because of a broken line, I don't want to be the one that's dropping oil all over the track. So other than that, all the temps, all the safeties are going to be turned off and we'll just run this thing as hard as we possibly can to the top. I'm Mad Mike and we are ready to attack Pikes Peak.
happy but still want to make sure he makes it to the top safely so considering that tire and that fuel is, is big we literally had to push the car to the start line to make sure the car had enough fuel to make it to the top Freaking week, Tommy. It's over. I don't want it to be over, but it's crazy. Like doing the actual run is so hectic, and you're like running out of energy. The engine temps are just coming up. The tires are disappearing. But at the same time, I just did not want it to end. I was like, just the adrenaline, the speed. Oh man, that is the funnest thing I've done on four wheels. Like legit, the scariest, craziest thing I've done on four wheels. Big, big learning curve this week, man. I've tried to absorb as much as I can from learning the car. Not just learning the car, but learning the track. You got 156 corners, the elevation, the, my body. I've been running freaking every day trying to get used to this atmosphere. Um, and with the, you know, low oxygen. Um, but yeah, what a freaking, what a day. I just can't believe it. The amount of support we've had from the fans out here. Be back, you know, even just the fan fest the other day. Um, yo, bro. You. Uh, yeah, just just a crazy, crazy week. A lot to absorb. A lot to absorb. Uh, this week, Pike Speak 2023 uh, International Hill Climb Race. I went to the last race. This week, I was with the international team. The Pat Mike team, the staff and the people of the country. We were the one and the only one. I was the one and the only one. この本当に大きな挑戦にはあの僕一人でもできないですしマジックでもできないもう本当に皆さんの協力があってやっと成し遂げましたで、えー、と結果はですねロータリーエンジンと、えー、とマツダ社の、えー、とワールドレコードなので、えー、とマツダ社の中ではバイクスピークで一番速い車になりましたイエイ、まあ、来年はねまたどうなるかわからないんですけど、えー
、まあ、挑戦は、ね、し続けて、まあ、これから海外のレースにいっぱい出ていこうと思います本当にチームの皆さんありがとうございましたスポンサーの皆さん本当にありがとうございましたイエイ。